Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman. Welcome to our wellness show. Wellness is my gig. <laughs> I've been doing this for many years. Neurosurgeon for 40, uh, four years actually, but I noticed the majority of the patients that I was seeing, frankly, needed some wellness coaching, and so it became of interest to me. So I've written uh, 17 books on the subject, uh, 77 shows on uh, YouTube, CDs, DVDs. Uh, it's because I care about you and your health that uh, what I found is that a lot of uh, illnesses can be prevented uh, through uh, proper coaching and participation uh, of the uh, patient. And, it, and I frankly had to teach patients how to motivate them to do this through uh, information. And that's what these shows, frankly, are all about, and I appreciate you watching them. And I hope you attend our lectures and l look at YouTube to learn more about this. Uh, this program here, I've um, had uh, focused on uh, the spirituality aspect to healing, which I personally think is uh, very important. On other shows on this very uh, program here, uh, I've been teaching with some ministers the, the Daniel Plan, a very good uh, book to read, a uh, book written uh, by uh, Mark Hyman, a uh, famous author, Blood Sugar Solutions, Mark Hyman, by Dr. Amen, a uh, very famous publisher uh, also, uh, and Rick Warren, a minister from Sacramento, who noticed how unhealthy his church members were, uh, he try, and he is doing something about it. And they published this book, uh, and uh, they did notice that the secret sauce, the secret sauce uh, to teaching the uh, parishioners, frankly, was groups, friends. Yes, friends. So they formed, I think, almost a thousand committees of five or six, seven people, and they would periodically meet once a week and uh, talk about wellness, not just nutrition, uh, but about wellness in, in general, which I think is an excellent method. And today I'm going to dwell a little uh, deeper in that. And I like to uh, say also this, uh, although he, he clearly is a uh, Christian, this applies to all religions. I don't care if you're Muslim or, uh, uh, or Jewish faith. Uh, it, ha it has to do with spirituality within you. Um, so it's, we're not promoting any one uh, religion here, just a method of teaching, okay? I'm just trying to get you well. Uh, so I formed uh, the Daniel Plan. He incidentally uses faith, okay, food, fitness, focus, and friends, the five Fs, to teach you how to become well. An excellent method. I highly recommend you, you read his book. They have a great website too, incidentally. Daniel Plan, a great website. You can learn an awful lot off their uh, website. If anyone here, any church, any synagogue, uh, uh, no, no matter uh, uh, mosque, whatever, would like to invite me to speak to them about this, I gladly do so in the name of their religion, not mine, their religion, uh, a way of teaching wellness. I volunteer uh, to do this. I formed uh, myself, uh, before even reading this book, uh, what I call the, Kulnish, the Culture of Wellness Circle. Uh, it's right here, uh, and uh, you can copy it off the uh, internet, cashmanwellness.com, we'll have it uh, on there. About eight things that I put together from my experience in the literature, how to uh, get you well. Uh, and spirituality clearly is one of those eight. But let's start with number one is, you have to accept some self-responsibility and choice. I mean, to, to become well, uh, healthy, mentally, physically, uh, you've got to learn to participate uh, in your health care. Ask questions, take notes, do some reading, go on the uh, internet, uh, listen to some uh, CD-ROMs, uh, watch some uh, DVDs, uh, which uh, I'll tell you about, uh, not just for me, but for my other people. Uh, it's very important uh, th that you do this so you can develop some understanding. It even says in the Bible, uh, we lack knowledge. We lack knowledge. Yeah, that's right in the Bible. Yeah, right in the Bible. So w we can provide knowledge, but power is when you participate. Uh, that's power. Just knowledge won't do it, but that's, you know, very helpful. Uh, number two in my uh, wellness wheel of the magic eight is nutrition. And that's extremely uh, important. What uh, are you eating? Uh, what uh, 
are you drinking sugary drinks? That's 50 percent of obesity. Sugar is destructive uh, uh, to the body. Are you eating nutrient-dense foods? Foods of color. You can add mushrooms and onions. They're full of vitamins, minerals, uh, phytochemicals. If you eat about 80 percent of your uh, uh, diet uh, that way, I'm not talking about dieting, just eating that way, uh, you'll be uh, uh, very healthy. 20 percent uh, perhaps uh, uh, meat products, but some of that can be nuts. Uh, for example, an ounce of nuts a day has a lot of protein in it. Uh, if you eat a balanced vegetarian diet, incidentally, the American Nutrition Society said it's completely healthy for a child and adult for great health. Huh, interesting. So you don't need to eat animal products to get your protein. That's a misconception. You know, we need about 0.6 to 1 gram per kilo of protein per day. Uh, not very much. We're eating about 200 grams when we need only about 35 to 50 a day. Uh, so we, and animal products ca carry with them. They come out of a, a non-organic farm, a lot of cancer factors, cancer growth factors, uh, inflammatory factors, very unhealthy way of eating. So I, am I saying be a vegetarian? No. Uh, but eat, you know, 80 uh, percent plant uh, uh, diet. Let me discuss with you while we're speaking about nutrition on the subject. Uh, I formed what I called Rudy's Plate. That's actually not Rudy me, but Rudy in Notre Dame, just, just to pick a name. i just show you that it's different than the uh, government's plate. And the reason being, I don't think the government's plate is very healthy. It's got uh, three things in there that could cause vascular disease. It's got milk products in there, which are not healthy at age two. Uh, you can read a book uh, by Joseph Keon, K-E-O-N. He explained to you uh, what's all in milk. The, the proteins, the casein, the lactose, the sugars uh, associated with children's type 1 diabetes, higher cancer rates. One of the greatest causes of cancer is the casein in milk. So I can go, go along with the government's plate. Uh, and uh, and the one for one of the halves is, is uh, uh, fruit. You can eat fruit, two or three pieces, and all the berries you want. But fruct if you eat more than 35 grams of fructose a day, that's metabolized in the liver, sucks your ATP, forms very low density LDL, causes arteriosclerosis. It's not the fat that's doing it, it's the sugar that's doing it. So I'm not that hot on the government's uh, plate, so maybe you can get a copy of Rudy's plate put in your refrigerator, which is, you know, one half starchy vegetables, another uh, quarter whole grains, 100% whole grains. You don't want the fiber stripped off of there. Uh, and st some starchy uh, vegetables that have more carbohydrates in them, but still had the coverings on them, so not, it's not processed food. Uh, grains are only around 10,000 years in a genetic structure of your body uh, doesn't appreciate eating a lot of grains. White bread's a poison because it's, it's uh, sugar, okay? So eat whole grain uh, bread, 100% whole grain. And some lean proteins, not from organic farm, uh, uh, from a non-organic farm, but from an organic farm. So where they haven't eaten all the pesticides, herbicides, and hormones that they feed to beef uh, regulate. So, but uh, that, I guess enough said about uh, Rudy's plate. So eat a flexitarian diet, a healthy diet. The thing is that the genetic structure of your food reacts to the genetic structure of your body. Yes, yes. And actually there's mathematics inside the food called biomathematics. Uh, that uh, the beauty in nature is reflected in your body if you eat the beautiful food. Th that's for real. That's called epigenetics. Epigenetics. A lot of people don't know a lot about it. My previous show here was on epigenetics. I suggest you watch it on YouTube. Uh, your eyes will open up when you read it. How you can affect how, besides losing weight, your beauty through biomathematics, uh, through what's called the golden triangle. This is real scientific stuff. Uh, and look at my lecture on epigenetics, you'll really learn uh, quite a bit. But let's continue on the circle a little bit. Physical fitness, uh, that's uh, uh, important. But if we exercise like anything, what do you burn in an hour? 200 calories? So if you're eating uh, a bad, fo bad food, high calorie food, uh, uh, just exercising is, is not going to do it. But exercising properly changes your mindset. Uh, that's important. You can burn 100 to 250 calories or so uh, unless you're doing something uh, fairly uh, uh, e extreme uh, and you'll improve your insulin resistance, for example, if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, uh, if you exercise regularly. So it's very important 
What's the minimum? Walk a half hour, five days a week. Lift some light weights a half hour, three days a week. Uh, uh, that's the minimum. And I, d I don't accept being uh, uh, partially or disabled because we can do something uh, in a wheelchair, whether you're paraplegic, quadriplegic, or you can, all you can do is stand, well then do the exercises. As dance in place, for example. Dancing is one of the most fun exercises there is. High intensity intermittent training, which is when I get in a treadmill, I walk fairly briskly, say for a minute, and then slower for half a minute. That's high intensity intermittent training. I do 10 minutes on, on, a, on a treadmill, uh, and then I go on an elliptical for five minutes, you know, fast 30 seconds, slow 30 seconds, then on a bike, the same thing, 20 minutes, and the rest of the hour I spend uh, doing core exercises to strengthen my core. You can go to YouTube core, learn them. I have about 20 of those uh, memorized. And the rest, uh, I do some weights. I do an hour of that every day uh, in, uh, at a place that dropped the heck out of its price. And I try to honor the place because I find ordinary people are going there. When we all thought that many people don't want to participate in exercise, well, they happen to be wrong because I see them there. And I want to honor the place because they ten dollars a month. Geez, I mean, this is wonderful. I'm just sorry I didn't think of that. And this man who owns the, the place has a franchise. He has five million members in the country. Marvelous. And other places are, are copying it now. So that this, uh, you can work out now at a very uh, low cost. So that's part of it. But eating correctly is good. Exercise increases neuroplasticity. Your brain cell grows reduces diabetes, chronic illnesses. Uh, so exercise is important, and you can affect your gene structure through epigenetics to make you healthy. Very, uh, so exercise is critical on physical fitness. So next we're heading, which is the main subject really of this show, spirituality, how important that I think spirituality is. A Daniel plan is a, is, is a good way to uh, f food, uh, f uh, faith, focus, uh, friends, uh, uh, fitness is an excellent way of doing it. There are many Bible quotes uh, in there and uh, inconsistent, frankly, with, with any, re any religion to use those uh, uh, five because it's very hard for some of us to change. It's very hard. The age-old habits, we all think it's our genes. The whole family is having a weight problem. And it, it, the trouble is, it, 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 most of the time, it's not your genes. It's what's in your genes. You're all eating the same bad food. Uh, and I'm not criticizing you for it. You have to gain some information. I encourage you because if you get pre-diabetes diabetes, diabetes you're going to have 20 years of disability. If you live that long, heart attack at a young age, increased rates of cancer. Uh, remember Dr. Katz in Disease Proof, uh, your life rode at 60% of cancer is totally preventable. 93% uh, of types of diabetes, 80% of vast disease, autoimmune diseases, all preventable through proper lifestyle. Uh, perhaps following the, the magic eight. You need a copy, we'll try to get it to you. Uh, and uh, call us or uh, copy it off the uh, internet. And uh, so uh, next to my uh, magic eight here, it's a way of life, a process. Uh, you have to kind of adjust your, but you must participate in your health care, you do a little reading, you got to get develop a friend. Remember, rem, uh, remember uh, in, the, in the Daniel plan, uh, what's the juice? The juice is friends. Develop some friends. If, you're, if your friend uh, is uh, terribly out of shape uh, and that's your best friend and you hang around together, it's a 177% chance that you'll both be ill at an early age. Wow. If you have a friend that has better health habits, you can, you can, they can help you. Uh, uh, so maybe a group, maybe a church, uh, uh, maybe a, a relative, maybe a child, maybe a man and wife or wh whatever, uh, maybe a, ch a church, but a fellowship of people working together on this will get healthier much quicker. So it needs to be a, a way of life. You have to think this way. Sign in your refrigerator, put the magic eight uh, on there. Next, education, when does it begin? Remember, I spoke about epigenetics and our gene structure. Uh, education, most people would say, at conception. Actually, it begins way before that. The habits of the mother and the father, the, uh, the egg and the sperm, uh, what they did, what the habits were, whether they smoked or not. 
uh, how they ate, how much they exercised will affect the, the fertilization process and the zygote of the infant. But now it turns out through epigenetics that even their parents and their grandparents affect their genetic uh, structure through epigenetics. Epigenetics goes back about two or three generations, goes forward two or three generations. So we are not uh, necessarily uh, what we inherited. It's our lifestyle after the, that affects 98% of our genetic structure, genetic expression through enzymes uh, by what we do. See, most people don't realize that. So what we do is critical, is critical. So we are educating uh, our gene structure, our DNA. 98% of a DNA is called junk DNA. And for, it, it's not junk, though. Uh, it's 6 million permeations of AGCT, the basic four proteins uh, that determine our, our uh, future. It, it's, it's, like, it's like lotto, where you have few, few pieces, but they can almost build anything. And that's how a genetic code operates. Uh, through arginine and, and uh, cysteine and thiamine, uh, the four basic proteins who are permeated into six, uh, I think it's billion pairs uh, uh, that determine our uh, future. We can affect that by our behavior. So uh, education is critical. So another thing I'd like to mention on the wilderness wheel, which is not much written about. I wrote a book a few years ago, it's on Amazon, called Welcome to Your Mind Body. It is based on a book written by Candace Pert, Molecules of Emotion, 1972, she wrote it. And what she's saying, what I'm saying is, through neurotransmitters, hormones, neuropeptides from your brain, uh, they and your autonomic and sympathetic nervous system can affect the cellular structure of your whole body, so how we think affects our whole body through neuropeptides, hormones, neurotransmitters, parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous system, because our 70 trillion cells have one of these receptors. And Candace Pert was the first one to prove the first receptor, uh, the morphine receptor site. And after that, now uh, we realize where our chemicals metabolically work. Then she discovered that our white cells make the same neuropeptides, hormones, and neuropeptides, and they can affect our brain. So it's brain, body, body, brain. So, in, in, and then uh, a book I wrote with my daughter, Kim, uh, Welcome to Your Mind, uh, Body. So how mind affects our body, and then we list through the mind, body index, the illnesses that are caused by how we think. Hardly anybody writes anything about it. Headaches atypical chest pain, irritable bowel, uh, skin rashes, uh, diarrhea, stress, depression, uh, anxiety, all can be caused by the human mind and the white cells. So we can affect our immunity how we think, but yet how anybody writes about this? I would estimate at least 50% of the people going to see the doctor, 50% of them have a presentation of physical stress, but it doesn't come in like that. They don't come in and say what their physical stress is. They come in and say, I have a neck pain, I got a headache, uh, I got diarrhea, I got skin rashes, I don't feel good, I'm depressed. And if the provider does not interpret that and does not know about that, they'll be running, off and running on the results of your MRI scan or CT scan or blood test, uh, uh, MRI, oh, six page long, uh, which shows the natural process of aging and to make a disease out of it. We need to fuse your back. I'm a neurosurgeon. I'm, fam I'm familiar with that. I saw that many times. So you must go to a doctor that does know some wellness and does appreciate and says to you, maybe unless you fell out of an airplane, and what's going on in your life? Oh, my husband left me three months ago and lost my job last week. Don't you think that that could affect what's going on in your body? through the neuropeptides, the neurotransmitters, and the hormones? Yes, it does. But very few people, it's not even taught in med school, are aware of this. That's at least, I think it's as high as 70%, actually. And if you eat poor, put poor nutrition on top of that, you can see if I say 90% of the illnesses can be prevented, stopped, and reversed uh, if the provider knows something about wellness. 
So when you pick a doctor for your child or for yourself, see that they have some interest in that. You don't have to go totally overboard that if uh, just feed, feeding you unusual substances or anything like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone that's educated uh, in, in this field. It's not easy. It's not easy to find a provider like that. And uh, the, uh, of the uh, eight, number seven, which I maybe should have put on there a little earlier, which I think is very important, is health risk factors. Know your numbers. This is critical. I personally think blood testing should be done starting at age two on a yearly basis. I don't think hardly anybody talks about it like that. You know, they might recommend start at age 35, or if you get a good reason as a teenager, the trouble is teenagers can be skinnier than heck and have metabolic syndrome, have abnormal blood tests, and they're going to have vascular disease, which you don't see uh, because they're one of the, the, the skinny, fat people, abnormal blood studies, and has a heart attack at age 35. You need to know the blood work. They have proven through the Begalusa study from New Orleans, a pediatrician studied every child that died of something and they got permission, they did an autopsy. And they found that heart disease began at age two. Well, actually now we know through epigenetics, which has been information since that this was uh, published in the late 1990s, epigenetically. Let's face it, it begins before that because what the parents ate and their behavior, whether they smoked or not, and their uh, grandparents uh, before that affected them epigenetically. So you see my reason for running blood tests once a year, not that expensive, health risk assessment, which means we're going to see what height they are, what they weigh, put them in front of a computer. My friend Dr. Arula, a great pediatrician in Fort Wayne, he puts them right in front of the computer. They look at the body mass index, the size, the weight, uh, and, uh, and then d does uh, and it talks about, are you exercising? Is he playing sports? Are you just sitting around watching TV and developing what's called sitting disease, which I'll talk about in a minute a little bit. Uh, it, what is the child doing? And then check the blood work. But the blood work is checked inappropriately at many times uh, because uh, we don't realize really what causes prediabetes and vascular disease. We know the answer, but it's not tested for. You need to know your very low density LDL, VLDL, uh, it is, needs, it's an NMR test. Most of the time it has to be sent outside the, uh, where you usually get your blood work done. Uh, in the very low density LDL is what burrows in your vasculature and causes vascular disease. It's not the fat, it's the fructose and sugar that did that. And you, you need to know about uh, that figure. You need to almost a ask for it. They'll draw an HbA1c, your blood sugar, your sugar with a protein for three months. But that's stage four diabetes. That's stage, stage four diabetes. Uh, you, you need to uh, uh, test a lot earlier than that. Uh, stage five is amputations and blindness. Uh, stage one is uh, insulin resistance, elevated insulin level. How do you find that out? By two hour glucose tolerance test. You have to ask for it, probably will not be ordered. They'll say your HbA1c is normal. Well, geez, that's stage four diabetes. You, you want it before that, catch early in the disease because pre-diabetes, many have a heart attack and die right then and there before they're even uh, diagnosed. So blood testing is critical. I think you may need to uh, push a provider around a little bit. They may not all order that. I noticed that in one of my very, very close relatives. Uh, and a, a CRP, C-reactive protein, is a good one to do too, to see if your body is inflamed. I wrote a book recently coming out on Amazon soon called Our Bodies on Fire, okay, inflamed uh, by uh, elevated uh, VLDL and, uh, and eating the wrong fats, the omega-6 fats versus the uh, good fats. So uh, in, in summary, uh, have a look at this uh, wellness uh, circle. I encourage you to read uh, books I've written on Amazon, YouTube. I have 77 lectures, uh, 10 lectures I give on a regular basis at Lufan Hospital, and, and read the Daniel Plan because I'm trying to promote spirituality a bit here uh, be, because I think it's very important in our lives. It is critical, uh, in, in, frankly, in many of our lives. It is a way of leading you uh, to wellness. I just give talks on this in the churches at times. Uh, if you'd like me to give a talk at your church, uh, we do it all free. Any church, synagogue, uh, whatever. Uh, 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 
I, in the mosque. I don't, I, I don't care. I don't pick religions here. This can be taught anywhere because we, we have uh, one out of three of pre-diabetes. Well, uh, one out of three has type 2 diabetes. Uh, one out of two has pre-diabetes. We're a very sick nation because we're all eating the mad, sad, toxic American diet. I'm trying to prevent it, stop it, and reverse it. The news, frankly, uh, it's great. It can be done, especially through uh, a scene catch my lecture called Epigenetics, which I did previously, but it'd be on YouTube, uh, which explains how our lifestyle affects our genes, our telomeres, the end of the chromosomes. So that's good news. Uh, we can indeed participate in our health care and make us a lot healthier and prevent a lot of 80% of the illnesses uh, at least. Uh, but you got to gather some information. You got to participate. Uh, it, it, maybe do some reading. Maybe uh, look at YouTube and, and my lectures and attend our live lectures uh, at Lutheran Hospital, which I've done for years. I give on reversing, preventing type 2 diabetes once a month. I do one on mind body illnesses once a month. Could be migraine, headaches. Uh, it, it could be uh, narcotic prescriptions. Try to educate you. Uh, and uh, you won't believe the last one I did. It was just on last Wednesday, 9 to 10. Uh, and I have this one is on 7 o'clock Mondays. The other one's 9 to 10 on Compass. The next one was on dancing, <laughs> okay? Uh, how to use uh, love, which Dean Ornish in his books brought up about love, spirituality, and healing, which I agree with. It's, it's not uh, that uh, uh, simple, frankly. And I thank you uh, uh, very much for watching. Uh, I'm doing this because I love you all. Namaste. Join us in this venture. Uh, send me a book. I'll meet you at Starbucks. We'll review it. Attend my lectures. Ask all the questions you want. Uh, and uh, we'll get healthy and happy together and, uh, and uh, make you look good and be healthy too because you're going to exercise and, and eat the right uh, uh, food and help me to uh, spread uh, the gospel of good health. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you very much. See you at the next lecture or the next uh, show.